Good afternoon. It's four o'clock here in Amsterdam, so I would, uh, I would like to get started. Uh, welcome all to the seven, second webinar on, uh, on call center workforce management. Um, welcome to everybody who was already here uh, last week, and also welcome to everybody who is here for the first time. Uh, last week I talked about uh, uh, fluctuations in, in forecasting, and today I'm going to talk about the next step in, uh, in call center workforce management, which is staffing, and why Erling C is not really suitable for that. Um, most of you have muted your mics. Uh, please mute your mic because uh, sometimes uh, this will cause uh, some noises and then you can uh, better hear it. And if there is anything you want, uh, you want to let us know, there is the chat and of course at the end there is ample opportunity to, uh, to ask questions through the chat or uh, by voice. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So the title is, Why Shouldn't We Use Erlang C? Well, let's uh, start at the beginning. So what are the different steps in, uh, in agent uh, scheduling? Well, last week, uh, I told you some things about workload forecasting, yes? And after workload forecasting, you have to translate the load into the number of people that you uh, need to uh, have behind the phone uh, when you're talking about in inbound. And that's an activity which we call safety staffing. Why it's called safety staffing, I'll tell you in a minute. And after safety staffing, you have the next step, and that is the actual scheduling of the people. And safety staffing is the number of people that you need at any moment, and then you need to uh, turn that into agent schedules, which can be executed by actual agents. Yeah, so the output of the first step of the workload forecasting is actually determination of the load. Yeah, so that's the forecasted load, and then staffing, and the output of the staffing step is the number of people that you uh, uh, that you need in every interval. Yes. Um, so when I'm talking about load, what do we mean by load? Well, there are different definitions of load, workload. Uh, if you really want to dive into these definitions, uh, uh, we try to make everything clear in the glossary of our WFM fellowship, which you can always ac access, yes? But load is defined as the forecast times the effort handling time in the same time unit, yes? So, uh, and why do we want to do that? Well, if you define it that way, then your load is actually, you can say that's the number of fully active agents that you need uh, uh, that you need to have exactly to work away the work that comes in at the same time. Yeah? So um, if you look at the work that comes in every minute, then the load is the number of agents that you need to work away exactly that amount of work. So just to give you an example that I'll use later on, suppose that you expect uh, your forecast is 60 calls in some 15-minute interval, you divide by 15, so that's four calls per minute on average. Last week we saw there are fluctuations. It's not always four, then it's eight, then it's two, etc. Yes, but you expect four calls per minute. Suppose that your average handling time, of course, that's also an average, but suppose that your average handling time is three, then on average, 12 minutes of work enters every minute, and so you also need at least 12 agents to work away that work. Yes. Now, if you look at the load, the forecast is four per minute and the average handling time is three minutes. So actually the load defined in this way has no dimension. Yeah, You have in average handling time in minutes, you divide by minutes, so there's nothing left. So it is common to call this Erlang. Yeah? So Erlang is, the defin is a dimensionless uh, unit and it's used in call centers, but also in telecommunication. Yes. Okay, um, now we uh, have to decide, okay, now we get these, uh, this load, and in our example, this load is 12, but should, in, should we then schedule 12 agents? Well, 
that is dangerous if you schedule exactly 12 agents, yes? Because we have fluctuations in the actual load, yes? Last week, we saw that if the average is like four per minute, uh, uh, for arrivals per minute, then the number of arrivals can fluctuate, as you can see here, between one and eight, uh, and pe perhaps even more extreme. And these fluctuations, you can, if you add to that the, the handling times, which themselves also slow, show fluctuations, then you get the load that you see here. So the actual, uh, if you would have many, uh, if you would have many agents, then here you see the number of busy agents during this same 50 minute interval. And as you can see, that ranges from seven to 18. So if you schedule 12 people, then of course, everything that is all the work above the red line uh, will get delayed and this delay will accumulate, yes? So that is the danger of scheduling the loads, yes? So how much agents should you schedule on top of the load to mitigate uh, this impact of fluctuations, to make sure that, this, uh, that these fluctuations in load, that you can handle it and that you can work it away? That is basically the idea behind safety stuff, yeah? So you can say uh, in, in, for, in call center terminology that it is the additional number of agents that you need to reach your service at. Now, and what is the most often used way, and I'm going to show you uh, why I think there are even more advanced methods, but uh, we'll start with, with Erling C, because that is the common way to decide how many people you need in such a situation. Yes. One remark, this talk I'm going to focus, this webinar I'm going to focus on safety staffing. Uh, and I want, and I'm not going to talk about shrinkage, but realize that on top of the load, first you do the safety staffing to make sure you reach your service level. But on top of that, you have to take uh, uh, your shrinkage into account because uh, your agents are not all the time available for handling calls. Yeah? So load plus safety staffing, that is the time that they are available for handling calls. Then of course they have trainings, they have breaks, they are perhaps ill all kinds of reasons why they are not available for taking calls, that's the shrinkage. Again, I want to touch upon the shrinkage, so that is, uh, you can see this as part of the third step in the previous slide, but I would just like to, uh, I want to make sure that you all realize, and I guess uh, most of you do that, but I want to make sure that, to realize that it's, you have to schedule more than loads plus safety, uh, you also have to have the shrink. Okay. A bit more on these Erlang C calculations. So the Erlang C formula, because it's really a formula, uh, was uh, invented uh, by a mathematician called uh, Erlang. He was Danish. He worked for the Danish uh, telecom com uh, company uh, around uh, 100 years ago. And he came up with this calculation for, uh, indeed, certain things he needed to compute in the Danish telecommunication network. And what it does, if you give the inputs, like uh, forecast, average handling time, number of agents, then it gives you the service level, and it also gives you the average time that your calls spent in the queue, and uh, the average speed of answer. Yeah. And I will show you later how you can do that in practice. And we also have some calculators uh, if you just want to fill in some numbers on our, on our website. And the nice thing about the Erlang formula is that it already takes these fluctuations uh, that were uh, discovered by Poisson, as I explained to you last week. Uh, it takes that into account. So it takes all the fluctuation both in handling times and in numbers of arrivals on the minute level, it takes that into account. And um, just as an example, and we'll go to some calculations, suppose that your safety staffing is two, uh, then load plus safety is, is 14, because we saw that the load is 12. Now, in this particular example, um, uh, the numbers that I showed on the previous slide, uh, forecast was four, the average handling time is Three, what you see here are typical way to draw a queuing system uh, among queuing theorists. 
And so queuing theory is a, is a field of, of part of mathematics, of science. So forecast is four per minute. Average handling time is three minutes. We have 14 agents. For some reason, we decided we want 14 agents. And then the Erlang uh, C formula uh, gives you the following output. It gives you a service level of 61%, around 61% answered within 20 seconds and the average speed of answer is uh, 43 seconds. So that is uh, what the Erlang formula does. And as you can see, even though we have a safety of two agents on top of the load, still, and you can see it by the green line here, um, uh, there is still some traffic above this green line. And of course, that traffic gets delayed. And uh, so the, uh, the and there will be more calls later. Uh, and so uh, in total, it's actually almost, uh, uh, this waiting is so long that it's almost 40% uh, more than 20 seconds. And of course, you can also look at the service level within zero seconds. Uh, and uh, that will be uh, uh, a bit uh, a bit lower, around 50, I think. But you, you can change to 20, of course. But uh, that gives an idea. Everything that's above the green line will get delayed, but it will cause other delays. And that explains that it's not a 100% service um, um I see a question, does Erlang C has any basis of this formula? So the basis of the formula are the Poisson fluctuations that I discussed last week and also similarly fluctuations in the handling time. And then there are some mathematical formulas and that evolves around uh, uh, mathematical processes, uh, no problem, uh, mathematical process related to so-called Markov processes, and then you can do the calculation. Going into details would take me a lot of time. That's more for mathematicians. Luckily, this, this logic is implemented in, uh, in, in tooling, in our tooling. You can find it on different websites, again, also on our website, but also in Excel. And it's, for example, also part of our, uh, of our uh, software solutions. Yes, but Erlang C, you will find it in any call center scheduling tool, uh, any tool that you might use to do your agent scheduling, Erlang C will be, uh, will be implemented. Yeah, but what you should remember, Erlang C quantifies uh, the safety stuff to reach a certain service level. Okay, uh, you can also use it backwards if you have uh, because often you want to know not, okay, I have 14 agents, what my service level? No, often you want to know, I want to have an 80% service level. What is the number of agents that I need? Yeah, so in this situation, I want a service level of at least 80%. How many agents do I need? You can plug this in your Erlang formula. Then it tells you uh, in this situation, it tells you you need 16 agents. Yeah, so actually the green line, you would say there's less than 20% above the green line. But again, because that get delayed, more calls get delayed. And, uh, and if you do the, the Erlang calculation, then you'll find out that it's actually the service level, if you have 16 agents, is 87%. Yeah, that's more than 80, but if you go to 15, then you will see that it's less than 80. So the lowest number of agents for which the service level is higher than 80 is 16. Uh, later on, I will show you how you can do these calculations uh, in, in Excel, actually. Uh, and again, you can just fill in these numbers uh, also uh, on our website. And again, it's implemented in many different... Uh, yeah, so that is Erlang C. But Erlang C, uh, and of course, that is the title of this uh, webinar, Erlang C also has certain disadvantages. So let's go into the two main disadvantages of Erlang C. In the first case, in the first case Erlang C gives you a service level forecast. Yeah? And just as we saw last week, you can come up with a forecast, but the actual will always be different. Yes, so there are always fluctuations and they are not part of the, uh, they are not into the 
Erlang formula. The Erlang formula gives you, just as last week, gives you an average, a forecast, but the actual will be, can be more or less. Yes, that's one thing. And in the second place, you should realize uh, Erlang himself, he lived 100 years ago. So this Erlang C formula is not specially invented for call centers. It's invented for certain situations within telecom networks and not for the large scale call centers that exist nowadays. Yeah. And because of that, Erlang did not take into account all the aspects of modern call centers. Yes, and there are several aspects and I will uh, uh, explain that to you, I will deal with them, but especially abandonment is not modeled. And the rest of the talk, my focus will be uh, on explaining you these two things. So I'm first, I'm going to focus on fluctuations, tell you a bit more about that. Uh, and secondly, I will talk more on uh, uh, how you can expand the Erlang C formula to handle abandonments uh, as well. Let's first talk about fluctuations. So again, the Erlang C predicts the surface level without the fluctuation. Just as last week, you made a forecast. Even if this forecast was perfect, then still there were fluctuations at, let's say, the minute level. Yes, and uh, and you can see them also. Eh? They were smaller at quarter level. We had a nice formula to uh, quantify that. You have the same thing with surface level fluctuations. So, um, just as uh, remember the title of last week, uh, when you have a, a perfect for forecast is share, share luck, it holds the same for your surface level prediction. You use the Erlang formula to predict the surface level. You, uh, you plan perhaps for an 80% surface level. And when you get to 80%, in fact, that is like your forecast last week, it is full luck. Um, so that means also that if you do not something additionally, but if you start for 80% and then you do nothing, and even if your forecast is perfect, if everything goes as expected, then in roughly 50% of the cases, your service level is below 80%, and in 50% of the cases, your service level is above 80%. Yes? And again, only in exceptional cases, you hit exactly 80%. So how can you quantify that? How we can we get a bit of a grip? Now, I don't have a nice formula uh, as we had last week for the fluctuations in, uh, in, in the forecast. And to be honest, many call centers look how good the forecast was. And many call centers can tell you we have like a 10% accuracy on our daily forecasting, for example. Few call centers say this was our service level. And that has to do with the fact that we do things like uh, real-time uh, performance manage, ma uh, management. It, we also do not expect that things go expect exactly as planned because uh, some agents are absent for all kinds of reasons. We do not expect that. Um, but let's dive a bit more into that. Yes, and what I have for you is actually a simulator, and this is some output, but instead of showing you just the output, I'm going to show it uh, uh, live. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch now um, um, the, my screen. So I'm going to stop the presentation and then right away I'm going to open a different window. So, um, uh, so I hope you can see now this window. And what you see here, actually this is um, uh, my personal homepage, um, uh, and actually uh, the homepage of the book I wrote on uh, workforce management. Here you see Erling C. So here we can reproduce the numbers uh, we just had. Um, uh, here you see indeed the 61% surface level. Yeah, so this is actually an Erling C calculator. Um, but I wanted to show you this. So what you see here is a single scale simulator. Now I told you Erlang C does a computation. Yes? Um, and the advantage of computation is that it is very fast. 
Yes, and uh, but you can also simulate a call center, and a simulation just means that you reproduce all the all the numbers of the call centers, the interarrival times, the service times. You reproduce that, and you really uh, play a call center, simulate a call center in your computer. And for certain situations, for example, multi-skill situation, this is the way to go. Yes. And, uh, but here, this is like the Erlang C situation simulated in, um, uh, as simulated here in this, this tool. Now, I'm going to, the third entry is patient. We'll be talk more about that in a second. We'll, everything here is in minutes. So um, 20 seconds is 0.33 minutes. Let's use again the 14 agents. And now I have to fill in the simulation time. So let's simulate for one hour. So one hour, uh, the, the, the numbers I used, four arrivals per minute on average, every sampling time of three minutes, let's simulate this. Hey, a service level of 90%, that's not 61%. And now it is 42%. And now it is 74%. Etc. So every time you simulate 60 minutes, you see that the answer is very different. If I simulate much longer periods, then I get to 61. Yeah? So what you see, actually, Erlang C is it is equivalent to simulating a very long period. Yeah? But of course, this never happens in reality. Yes, but that is what the, the calculation is uh, based on. So let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. So I hope you can see again the PowerPoint. Um, so this is what I just showed you. I showed simulated 60 minutes, and then you get very different results between 50 and 90. And if you make the period even shorter, like let's say 50 minutes, then you can have very low service level or even 100% if accidentally uh, there were few arrivals and all the, uh, uh, and the agents could handle all the arrivals without delay. So, and here you see the long periods, uh, and here actually, uh, I simulated with 16 agents, and as you saw also, how do you get an 87% service level? What I just showed you was with 14 agents, and then we knew that Erling C gave uh, 62. Yeah, so I hope this is clear. So um, Erling C only gives you something like an average, what an expectation, a forecast of your service level. Um, um, so what you see are fluctuations. And here I have a nice plot uh, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the simulation. And of course, the longer the period, the less fluctuations you get. And the bigger your call center is, the less fluctuations you get. And here are simulations, which are actually from the PhD thesis of uh, Alex Raubos, who is one of our developers who made uh, also uh, worked on the implementation of the Erlang formula, but uh, uh, has been working a lot on our forecasting, our scheduling tools, uh, especially on the algorithms, of course, as he is, that's is what he specialized in. But before that, he did um, a PhD thesis on call center mathematics here in Amsterdam. And um, he, he made these simulations. And actually, this was not in the scientific community. People didn't realize that these fluctuations were so big. So here you see a three hour interval in the call center. Um, uh, so here you see the same thing. And I see a question here from uh, Gregory. Uh, so the shorter the simulation time, the more fluctuations. Why, if you increase the simulation time, and that's exactly what you see in this uh, graph here, the longer the simulation time, the less fluctuation. Why is that? It means that uh, if you simulate one hour, yeah, and the service level is high, then perhaps the next hour is low. So 
over longer periods of time, um, and one period, one interval kind of compensates the other. And so that dampens. So in a longer period of time, and there are less fluctuations. That is what statisticians call the law of large numbers. Um, um, uh, it, is, uh, it is like throwing uh, dice, uh, uh, like uh, I showed um, also last week. Of course, uh, if you take the average over 100 uh, uh, dice, uh, if you roll a die 100 times, then you get close to three and a half. But if you if you do it 10 times, uh, then you see more fluctuations. Then uh, so uh, uh, fluctuations they they have the tendency to cancel each other out, and that's a basic statistical principle that applies here. That statistician called the law of large numbers. And the bigger the call center, it's also like having multiple call centers in parallel. And the longer the period, huh, then, then exceptions cancel each other out. So that's, again, a basic statistical principle. Um, uh, they call it the law of large numbers. And actually, um, this same principle, and then if you dive deeper in how this convergence goes, then, then mathematicians formulate a theorem which is called the central limit theorem has to do with normal distributions uh, if any of you is familiar with statistics and then he, indeed you get these bell-shaped uh, distributions as you see here this goes way too deep into the mathematics especially um, uh, if you're not familiar with, with statistics the important thing is if you run a call center for a day and you have an expected service level uh, based on your staffing uh, of 80%, then even if it's a perfect day with now not unexpected illness and not a higher uh, load than, than expected, then still uh, you have fluctuations around this 80%. And one day it's perhaps 60% and the next day it might be 90%. Yeah. Um, there are some square roots involved in that. That has, again, everything to do with these mathematics. Um, and I won't go into the details of that. Uh, then you should really follow a uh, uh, statistic course. Uh, we, we give some details um, during our, our trainings, where, of course, we have much we have more time to go into these type of details, but if you want to understand all the details, you really have to follow a, st a statistics course. Eh? But the main message is there are fluctuations. Yes, and so that is one of the reasons why if you want to reach 80% by the end of the day, you always need real-time performance management. You always need to say, okay, today, incidentally, things I didn't get my service level in the morning, so perhaps I need to put more I had to get a higher than expected service level in the afternoon, so I need to do something. Yes, and of course, uh, that can be different things. Next to uh, managing the service level, uh, real-time performance manage management, or as they call it, traffic management in uh, in, in the Netherlands, um, uh, you uh, there are always changes, unex uh, there are always errors in your forecast, uh, so changes in the load. Uh, it might be that more or less people are ill than expected. Always things going on that uh, make sure that you need uh, traffic uh, management or real-time performance. Yeah, so that is the message around the servers, level fluctuations, and I hope that by using the tool, uh, this online simulate, you can get a bit of a feeling for that. And if you have any problems using that, you can always ask me later or send us an email. We'll be happy to, uh, to help you uh, with that. Okay, now we come to the perhaps the most important things, which are the abandonments, yes? Because as I said, Erlang C is not, uh, was not designed for call centers. And suppose now that a call center is understaffed, yes? Now, I did a similar simulation, yes? And here, as you can see, I did the same simulation, forecast of four, effort handling time of three, but now I scheduled 11 agents, yes? So that is less than the load of 12. Yeah? I have a simulation time here of 600 minutes. And what do I see? I get an average speed of answer of more than half an hour and a service level of 1%. So only 1.5% waits less than 20 seconds. And people on average wait more than half an hour. Well, there is, of course, 
no call center that operates that way because what happens in reality people abandon yeah and even when uh, a call center is staffed in the right way then still people abandon eh? less than when you're understaffed but it uh, it always happens so uh, taking abandonments into account is an important thing when you're uh, uh, when you're running a call center and uh, also about abandonments, people thought about it, uh, or starting uh, around the 60s. Um, and we, uh, as, uh, as a company, and also uh, we contributed also in that, in designing algorithms to handle um, abandonments and actually handling also the real trials that uh, comes from that. Yes. So, uh, but more on that in a, in a minute. So what are the advantages uh, the main advantage of the Erlang X is that it also gives you the ab abandonment percentage and it gives you, perhaps even more important, a realistic service level because in reality people abandon, so you have to take that into account. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you need a bit more input because what you need to enter is the willingness to wait of your customers. Yes, and we also call that the patient. So how long are people willing to wait? So suppose that your patience is five minutes and that you get connected after one minute, then, well, uh, you, you get connected, you do not abandon. But suppose that your patience is three minutes, and of course, patience also varies, uh, just like handling time, it changes, it is different from, from customer to customer. So if your patience is three minutes and your waiting time is four minutes, then you won't wait until these four minutes, then you abandon. Yeah? So that is what we call the patience. Yeah? And next to the abandonments, of course, if people abandon, then people will call, at least some of them will call again. Yeah? So that is an important thing. Another thing that is uh, sometimes the case, perhaps less important, so I won't uh, I won't look at that during this presentation, but sometimes you have a finite number of lines, so that means called blocking, so that when the line, uh, when the number of lines is reached, then uh, then calls are blocked, they do not enter the call centers. And the third thing that in certain situations uh, is important is to staff a non-integer number of people. So as we just saw, 16 gave a service level of 87. So actually, uh, 15 was not enough. So you want to be somewhere between 15 and 16. Now you are going to say you cannot schedule 15 and a half agents. But when you add shrinkage to it, or perhaps they do some part of the time other things like back office work, then you can think that a non-integer number might make sense. And so we're also looking to that. And what you see in general is that you need less staffing than the early C. And why is that? If people abandon, that's of course a bad thing because they cannot reach your service. But it's a good thing for all the people that come later than the, than the customer who abandoned. So actually, abandonment improves the service level. Yeah? So that's an important thing. So under the Erlang X, uh, you will schedule less people than Erlang C. And Erlang X is more realistic than Erlang C. Uh, so Erlang C overstops. Yeah. And an important thing, sometimes Erlang C can give you a really weird answer, like 0% service level or an infinite average, uh, uh, average speed of answer. Erlang X won't do that, even when you're honest. So here's an example. So the same situation, these 14 agents, now the average patience is five minutes. And what happens, instead of a service level of 61%, you get a service level of 77%. Yes, so considerably higher, but you get an abandonment rate of 4%. In here, I assume, as you can see in this drawing, that everybody who abandons uh, does not go back to the call center. We'll get back, we'll get to that later, but uh, here, nobody uh, redoes. Yeah. And now um, you can also do the reverse calculation. Now I require a service level of at least 80%. And actually, now the Erlang X tells you that you need not 16, but 15 agents. 
yes and that your abandonment rate will be around three percent so actually by taking these patients into account which i assume here to be on average five minutes you see that you need one agent less yeah and I won't go into the details on how to calculate these patients. There are some statistical means for that. That's not very simple because you do not know the patients of everybody because some people, and they, most people hopefully, they get connected. So you do not know the actual patients. Yeah? And you only see the patients of those people who are not that patient because they, they tend to abandon and other people are willing to wait an hour for your service. Yes? So there are some statistical calculations uh, behind that. We can help you with that. Uh, there are some statistical theory that helps us here. But uh, be, be aware of the fact that it's not simply averaging the abandonment times of the abandoned people, then you're really underestimating the patients of your customers. Uh, okay, so let's let's continue with uh, redials. So here you see the redials. So now suppose that fifty percent of the abandoned calls they actually redial, and so what happens is they go back here. By the way, note that this will give you a forecasting challenge because in forecasting, usually you only observe the number of calls that enter your call center. So that includes the redials. So that is not your actual demand. Um, uh, that is, um, uh, that is, it is less. Uh, so if you, certainly if you have a bad service level, then what you observe is less than your real demand. Yes, and I see a question from one of you. If patients can be derived on the basis of the historical abandonment data, yes, it can. What we do need to do that, and there we have some st statistical techniques that can help you. Um, if you, um, um, but then you need to know the waiting time of all your customers and you need to know whether they got connected and whether they abandoned and then there's a statistical technique called the kaplan meyer estimator that does uh, that that helps you um, get the patients uh, distribution so that is definitely possible um okay um so now what you see here, now we assume, and um, uh, that's another thing that you have to estimate, but let's assume that 50% of your calls that abandon, that they redial and they come back here. So what does that mean for your call center and your service level? Well, actually, um, that means, um, um, if they redial, uh, that means there are more calls entering your call center. And of course, this will reduce your service level. And that's exactly what you see happening here. So if you assume this 50%, here the forecast is really the forecasted volume from outside. Yeah? So that's what we sometimes call the fresh volume. Then the actual uh, number of calls entering here is a bit higher. You could do the, comp uh, the computation. You should first add five percent and then half that, so around two and a half percent that has to be added to that. Some of these turn around, so it's a little bit higher, but roughly that. Um, that means more calls. That of course means a lower service level and a higher abandonment. Yes. Again, you can do all this calculation in early X, and I will show you in a, in a minute. But that is. Uh, that is uh, and the consequence of it. And you could even set this to 100%, and we'll do that when we are going to do the calculations. You will see that uh, and that even then, because these calls call back, but uh, they typically abandon when it's crowded, and they call back, hopefully, when it's a bit less crowded. So, uh, and so you will see that even then, the overall service level is lower than under Erlang C, mm -hmm. while everybody gets served in. Okay, so let me give you a demo. So uh, what I'm going to show you, we have a uh, different solution. What I'm going to show is something we have been working on the last couple of months in putting it into the online, uh, in off the online version of Office. So Office 365, 
So I hope it works. If it doesn't, I will show you here. But let me switch again the, the screen. So I'm going to select another window that I'm going to show to you. Uh, yes, that's here. Uh, so what I'm showing here, let me, uh, yeah, let me go to the screen as well. What, so what you see here is the Erlang uh, calculator um, uh, in uh, Office 365. So this is a brand new version. It's not yet in the Office uh, store, but um, as, uh, it, it can do the Erlang C, the Erlang X, and something which is called Erlang Chat, but I won't talk about that uh, today. So here I, I made some calculations, especially for today. So let's make it a big a bit bigger so that you can, oh, this is perhaps too big, so that you can all see it. So what you see here is, uh, well, exactly the calculations here. So what you see is um, uh, um, forecast, average handling time, here the units per minute. So this is the Erlang C situation that we calculated with a forecast of three, average handling, a forecast of four, average handling time of three, 20 seconds. And then you can see here, how this works, you have, we have an Erlang X SLA formula because the acceptable waiting time is given in seconds and everything needs to be in the same unit. I'm dividing here by 60 to make it minutes. And now it does the calculation. Eh? So it makes actually a connection with our online service. And if, for example, I increase the number of agents to 15, then you see indeed that the service level increases, the average speed of answer uh, decreases. So this is, and now I tell, okay, I need an 80% service level. Then here is the function that gives you the number of agents that you need. And here you see a fractional number of agents. So around 15 or three, you can always round that up to the nearest integer if you really want it to be an integer. Um, but here you can, um, here you can see. Now here in the E column, you have the same uh, numbers, but now it's Erlang X and now it's patience. And here we assume very unpatient uh, customers. Uh, on average, after one minute, they abandon, but some of them were already abandoned after a few seconds. And then you see again, um, uh, of course, a much higher service level because less customers in the queue, those who have the patience get through, lower average speed of answer, shorter queue, and you see a certain abandonment percent. Of course, if I assume that there are more patients, like here, five, then you see a lower abandonment percentage, somewhat lower surface level. You see the numbers changing. Yes. Um, now, you can also include, I didn't include the finite number of lines. It is here in the, uh, in, in the, in the call, but, uh, well, I cannot show you everything in uh, 45 minutes. Um, but um, here you see the retrial percentage. So this is the fresh volume that really comes from the outside. Now, 50% of the abandoned calls, they redial. Yeah? So when it's 0%, and then you get the, oh, oh the patience is different. Uh, so here the patient again one. So uh, and then you would get the answers here if patience is one. But now it is like 50%. And then you see abandonment rate is higher, average speed of answer. Um, uh, of course, if you compare that, let's set this back to one, uh, then you see indeed um, that you get a bit lower. Uh, service level, a bit higher, more abandonments, but that's because of the redials. And even if you make the redials uh, at 100%, and then you see the service level is a bit higher than... Uh, what is perhaps also interesting to mention is that you also get, even if you're understaffed, like if you have 11 uh, agents, um, uh, oh, this is the acceptable waiting time. I'm sorry, I should look at the number of agents here. Even if you have 11 agents, then you're understaffed. Then you get a big, uh, you get a lot of abandonments, but you still get reasonable numbers, yes? Um, and that's here because also they have a very low patient. If your customers are more patient, it looks, it looks worse. 
uh, and the surface level is really lower on the other hand, less abandonment. But still you get numbers that are, and that's also things we measured uh, against real call centers, you get answers that are much closer to uh, reality. Um, of course, with the Erlang formula, you can also do the backward calculations, as you can see here. So, uh, so this tells you if you want to get in this situation an 80% surface level, you need this number of agents. And as you can see, uh, and this number is lower than the number that was required. You can also say, I don't want to have more than 5% abandonment. There are different formulas in here that can help you. Okay, so this is, um, so uh, as I said, um, I'm, I'm quite excited uh, to show this to you right now uh, because um, uh, this has been uh, recent development of some people in our team who have been working on that to make this available on the uh, uh, on Office 365. And if you're interested, please let us know. In a few weeks, it will be uh, available. Um, uh, we will have finished testing, and we will uh, uh, it will be available for uh, for news. Okay. So uh, having shown you this, let me get back to the uh, to the presentation. Uh, uh, yes, so let me get back to the uh, power uh, PowerPoints. Um, uh, so this is what I just showed you at uh, the same uh, slide. Um, and that is actually uh, the main things I want to show you, uh, the fluctuation Erlang X. And here I showed you uh, really how you can use that. What I didn't show, of course, is that in Excel, it's easy to analyze a whole day with the different forecasts per day, surface level day, required numbers. And the advantage, of course, of using sheets, as, as probably many of you already do with Erlang C. Um, um, uh, is, uh, uh, hey, you can use this calculation. I see your questions. Yeah, so what this is actually a Dutch version of uh, what you see here is a Dutch version of uh, of Excel. So that uses a decimal comma. So here you see an abandonment percentage of 9% and here 12%. That is indeed pretty high, but here I'm taking as an example a patience of one minute, which is really unpatient. So if you go here, to if you would make patients of 10 minutes average, um, then you will see a lower abandonment percentage. Of course, if you go to the required staffing of fifth of of, uh, of if you schedule more agents, you will also see uh, a, a higher uh, a higher uh, a higher service level, and of course, a lower abandonment percentage. And of course, the nice thing about the Erling C is that you can play with it. You can see the effects of different things uh, on each other. Um, OK. Um, this ends, uh, let's say, the technical part of my presentation. Um, a lot of these trainings um, uh, uh, um, a lot of these trainings can be followed um, uh, online. Eh? So we have an online environment for uh, for trainings, and I uh, I hope this uh, 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 so given the current situation where many of us are uh, are in uh, are not able to go out, but that's an opportunity to. Uh, uh, to learn something while being uh, working from home. Um, so I want to point you uh, to that. So if you're interested, please send us a mail um, or uh, go to the website and register there. Um, what I showed you is the Office 365 uh, add-in. Um, uh, we also have a, a Windows add-in. Actually, Mac on S Excel, they in the latest upgrade, they kicked out some functionality. So it's really hard to have the uh, Excel add-in working on the Mac. But we have one 
uh, for Windows that runs locally, so you have to install some software. The Office 365 is an add-in, an XML, uh, that connects to the CCMod server, as I just showed you. And of course, all these algorithms, uh, Erlang C simulation is, is also implemented in, our, in, the, in the other software tools that we have, so that you can right away, uh, for example, on top of the forecasting, uh, use the Erlang to do the, uh, to do the safety stuff. Okay, um, for next week, um, uh, for next week, uh, we, um, uh, there will be a webinar at the same time. Um, um, uh, again, uh, on Friday, four o'clock. Um, we do not have set the subject yet, so if you, uh, 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 if you if you have a subject that we could discuss, let me know. Yes, and uh, we will uh, pick this uh, one out for next week and perhaps the other way, weeks. So you're all invited for that. We'll all send you the invite. Um, um, so uh, I hope to see uh, many of uh, you there. So as I said, any suggestions uh, uh, are welcome. Please send send me an email. Um, I already uh, we have already had some questions to the to the chat, um, but perhaps there are more questions. Um, uh, so if you you can send me a chat, um, or uh, I see uh, Stefan he asked uh, Erling chat. Yes, uh, that might be um, uh, that might be a good uh, also a, a topic for next week. Um, so that is indeed part of our Erlang uh, model. We got a request already quite some time ago from some customers. Can you add how to deal with chat uh, and to do Erlang-like calculations for chat? So we developed a tool for that. Um, so that might be a subject for uh, next week. Thank you. Um, I see some people leaving. Have a, have a, have a nice weekend uh, as well. Um, Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, and again, a lot of questions uh, and very relevant questions were already asked during the webinar. If that's the, uh, not the case, I wish you uh, a very good weekend. Uh, stay healthy. Um, I hope that many of you will join uh, uh, next week again, uh, same time, four o'clock Amsterdam time. I hope this was uh, all useful to you. And if there is anything, uh, please contact us. Uh, have a nice uh, weekend. Uh, keep safe uh, and bye-bye.